what I thought I would do is take one or two of the problems, and we'll do one problem right now, walk through a couple of issues uh, related to this. I'm not going to give you the complete problem, but what I want to do is to walk through and make sure that we understand what the issues are. So what we have here is we have uh, the problem 1715, and what you see on the one page, which I have highlighted here on the bottom, is the actual information for the, the case. And what we're attempting to do is we're attempting to identify ending balances from the perspective of using the worksheet. Now, there's some information that we don't need. There's some information that we need to calculate. And a couple of items, what we need to do is we need to back into the numbers once we get everything else. Let me just share with you a couple of things that I think is, becomes very important related to this. You notice that we have on the side here, and these are memo transactions. These are items that do not show up on the balance sheet of the organization. The PBO is what is owed to retirees. Plant assets are the assets that we have in the retirement program, but these are held by the plan administrator. So the plan administrator has assets, which are the plan assets. These are going to be a debit. The PBO is what is owed to the retirees. It is essentially a liability, but it's not going to show up on our balance sheet. What is going to show up on the balance sheet is what we see on the side here is a net pension liability or asset. And essentially what I've done here is I've created the scenario where that what we're doing is we are summing PBO and the plan asset. This works very well from the perspective is if you consider a credit as a negative number and a debit as a positive number. And even though the PBO and the plan asset are off the balance sheet, what we want to do is we want to make sure that all of our debits and our credits equal so that we remain in balance. So this is what we're attempting to do. So let's go through a couple of things that I think will be very interesting as we're going through this material. So the information, it's in the book, it's on page uh, 1056, but it's also on the other page, the, 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 uh, the given information that you see here. Essentially what I did is I just moved it over here so it's all on the same page. So what we see here is we have the projected benefit obligation January 1st and December 31st. Now the December 31st is going to come down here. What we ultimately want to do is to be able to calculate this as the sum, which is what we're looking at here. The plan assets, you notice the plan assets, the ending balance of the plan assets are $4,975. And that is going to be, again, in the cell E25, but E25 essentially is the sum. Now, the hard part is that there actually are two numbers that you need to back into because that information is not given. But let's put in the easy information. So there's a lot of easy information that we need to consider, and then we will go from there. By the way, just for your information, the accumulated benefit obligation is not information that we're considering. As we talked about in the lecture, is the accumulated benefit obligation is something that, that is an interesting calculation, but it's not part of understanding what our liabilities are related to pension. So the given information of the PBO is $4,100. Now, again, as we had talked about, the PBO is a liability, essentially acts like a liability, so we're going to do a credit. So this is $4,100. We plug that in there, and our beginning balances balance of the plan assets is $4,530. That's a positive number. So what you see is at the beginning of the year, what we're looking at is we are looking at a asset. Basically, we're, in, uh, we're to the good related to our pension plan of $430. Okay. Now, let's look at uh, the next item, service cost. As we talked about, the service cost is the incremental increase in cost 
associated with the fact that employees now have one more year of service. So the service cost is going to increase the liability, it's going to be a negative number, and it is going to be a positive number in the pension expense. Now I will tell you, just as a little hint, and let me just sort of highlight this, is this is what we're going to call a plug number. The information is not given, so what you need to do is you need to be able to calculate this. Okay, the next item is the interest cost. Interest cost increases based upon the fact that we are now one year closer to retirement. So the interest cost information is given, it's 7%. So the issue becomes is 7% of what? Well, it's 7% of our PBO. So we're going to take this PBO times 0 0.07, and we have a cost there of 287. So you notice it increases our liability and then on the expense side is it's going to be an expense. So we have an expense here, starting off here at $287. By the way, uh, once you get everything correct, it's going to say correct as opposed to try again. Now, one of the things that we did not talk about in the lecture is the fact that what we are doing in relationship to our expected gains and losses from our assets is we, can, we report our expected, but then we do an adjustment based upon the actual gains and losses. So what we have here is we have the expected gains. So the expected gains is 10% and the gain is going to be a 10% of the plan assets. So we have the plan assets times 10%. So we have a gain of $453. Now a gain essentially is going to reduce our expense. So we're then taking the uh, gain and we're having a, a reduction in the expense or a credit to the expense. So that's essentially what you're seeing here. So we have 453 and 453, one positive, one negative. So we do have this balance in terms of debits and credits. The next piece is what is the actual gain and loss? Well, I'm telling you it's not given. So we're going to have to plug that number in. So I'm just going to put a little pink mark here to let us know that this is something that we need to consider. Okay, let's do a couple other things that are going to be pretty easy. So you notice that benefits paid is $295. When we pay benefits, what this means is that we have a decrease in our liability because we no longer have that liability, but we also have a decrease in the plan assets. So a decrease in the, the liability is going to be a debit. So this is going to be 295. And the in decrease in the plan assets is going to be a credit. So that's going to be 295. Let's look at a couple of other things. You notice at the top here that we have other comprehensive income. And we have two items. We have prior service cost and we have a net loss. One of the things to keep in mind is that through this process of smoothing out earnings and smoothing out expenses is that we hold large gains and losses in this uh, other comprehensive income and we slowly move these items out. So the first thing that we want to consider is our prior service cost related to what's stated here is there's a prior service cost of $840. So we have an $840 prior service cost. This is going to be a debit. And this prior service cost uh, essentially is related to the fact that there is a change in the plan. This change in the plan affected the organization, but because the change in the plan was considered a prior service cost, these items are held in other comprehensive income and then expensed only 
through the remaining life of the organization or of the staff within the organization. So the remaining service life, the average remaining service life is 12 years. So what we're essentially going to do is we are going to credit the prior service cost and move this over to expense. So the idea is this is going to be the 840 divided by 12 years and we are reducing the prior service cost. Now you notice how that this then changes to correct. And then what we have here is on the pension expense is this is going to be an increase in the expense. So let me just talk just very briefly about this prior service cost. The prior service cost represents an expense related to a change in the plan. So a change in the plan essentially is affecting everyone up to that point. That cost of the change stays in other comprehensive income and then we allocate that to the expense side based upon the average remaining life, service life of the organization. Now, let's talk about the net loss. And when we talk about net loss, I want you to spend a little bit of time considering what we are looking at specifically related to the corridor effect. So what we've talked about in the corridor effect is what we're attempting to do is to smooth out significant gains and losses that are affecting the plan. In this case, what we have is we have a net loss of $477 that is coming forward. So I'm going to the slides related to this income smoothing and this concept of corridor to make sure that we understand this. This is part of the presentation and hopefully this uh, helps out a little bit. You notice here that if the net gain or loss is too large, this expense must be adjusted. Too large meaning that it exceeds, equals or exceeds, the higher of 10% of either the plan assets or the PBO, whichever is higher. And this is what we're calling the corridor effect. So the corridor effect essentially is we're looking at the net gain or net loss and we're comparing this to 10% of the higher of either the PBO or the plan assets and then creating a scenario in terms of a calculation. If the net gain and loss exceeds the corridor, the excess is not charged to the pension plan all at once. Instead, as a further concession to income smoothing, only a portion of the excess is included. So what we're looking at is we're considering the minimum amount that should be included is the excess at the beginning of the year divided by the average remaining service life of active employees. So the idea is that we have a net loss. This is a given amount, and this is, again, uh, an example, a little bit different from the actual problem. And then what we are multiplying is 10% of the greater of either the PBO or plan assets. And then we have the excess. We then take this excess, divide it by the average remaining service life, and then we get an expense associated with this process. So let's walk through the corridor effect. In the corridor effect, what we're looking at is we're looking at our net loss and we're comparing it to 10% of the greater of plan assets or the PBO. So let's kind of consider this. So in our net loss, and essentially the net loss is the amount that we're going to allocate over to our pension expense, is going to be the 477. And let's put this in parentheses, 477 minus 10% of the greater of plan assets or PBO. Plan assets is $4,530, 453. And we then divide this by the average remaining service life, which is 12 years. So we have the $2 there. So what we, you notice is that the $2 is the expense and what I need to do is I need to change the sign here. So the $2 essentially represents the 
expense that we move from other comprehensive income over to the pension expense. We have one other item here. We have the gain due to actuarial assumptions. So this gain due to actuarial assumptions is $44. So the gain due to actuarial assumptions is a credit. So the credit is $44. The other piece of it is the actuarial assumptions is so it's going to decrease the PBO. So completing the transaction here is we have a decrease in the PBO. The final piece of this is related to the cash contribution to the plan. So you notice here that we contributed $340 to the plan. Contributing cash is going to increase plan assets. So we're going to increase plan assets by the amount, which is a contribution, is $340. And then in terms of a journal entry, is going to be a decrease of the same amount of $340 to cash. So we have everything that we've set up with the exception of the fact that we do not at this point know what the service cost is as well as the adjustment for the difference between the expected return and the actual return. Now I'm going to let you do this calculation yourself but basically is all it is is to understand that there's going to be a difference. The difference in ending balance is 4380. And we're going to compare this to our other balance, which is 4048. And then on the plan assets is the difference is going to be the, uh, what we have on the plan assets. The ending balance is 4975 and we compare this to our 5028. So we have the two numbers, and essentially what you wanna do is you want to make the adjustment to the PBO, to the plan assets, as well as to our pension expense. Easy transaction, but basically we've walked through all the major issues related to this problem. I hope this helps, and the issues that we see in this problem are actually very similar to the kinds of things that you see in the other problems. So by understanding all of these aspects, it really will help you understand the rest of the problems. Thank you very much and have a good day.